Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts which they earn by watching. In this video we begin with an interesting nuclear stage, a very large nuclear engine down below and then a small nuclear stage up top that is going to tug things around Mars. So this is a Mars tug and it's got a lot of liquid hydrogen in the hope that it can push things to where they're supposed to go with the claw at the top. And I was intending to reuse the big stage at the bottom and so we have a controller and some RCS and a docking port there but I rarely end up reusing the nuclear stages so they just end up hanging out for no reason. Anyway, I for some reason decide that the thing to do would be to use Atlas first stages as boosters, basically, uh, actually they were meant to be used that way on the Atlas Heavy option that was never flown, uh, but yes, we have six RD-180 boosters, and they will lift it off the ground, and then only in flight will the nuclear engine ignite, of course, it's not useful on the ground. So here it goes, this uh, strange contraption. Yet another unique option as the boosters separate. So there go the six of those, and then we're on the core engine, which is, uh, I think, a 2500 kilonewton nuclear engine. And there it is making orbit with a fair amount of fuel, though not enough to eject the payload all the way out, but the payload will use its own fuel to finish it up. So, there's all the lines of all our missions that are currently underway. It's quite a bewildering mess of things going on all at the same time. And here we have our transfer to Mars setup. And uh, there it is going. So we do have the Delta V. I think we must have locked some fuel because it seemed like that stage had enough to complete the transfer. And this is the payload on its way. Next up, I needed to send some supplies out to the moon to Lunar Gateway and Probably at the instigation of people in chat, I decide to use New Glenn Heavy. Uh, I hate this idea, especially because of the engine fairing at the bottom, uh, making the coupling of them complicated, right? They get in the way and they have to be really far spaced out. So yeah, it's an inconvenient thing and this is probably the only time I've done it, but I did do it. Generally all the silly ideas I've at least tried at one point that they were horrible. We are going to have to throw down the core, so I used the engine groups controller there and I've named the center engines core so that they can be throttled down independently. Otherwise, of course, the core would expand at the same time as the boosters, which is not what we want. So off go the boosters. And I had forgotten that these nose cones had a separate decoupling thing. Uh, I think they're from FASA, if I recall correctly. They're sort of weird. Anyway, off goes the core, and we are on the second stage with the BE-3Us. And the fairing separation. Alright. And then we, of course, make orbit. With plenty of Delta V in the stage, because I think really we could have put a lot more supplies on here, and we probably should have. I think we had an amount of supplies that would be fit for just a regular New Glenn, not a New Glenn Heavy. But anyway, we seem to have a lot of Delta V, but that did help in terms of getting the rendezvous around the moon because we weren't launching at the right time to rendezvous with Lunar Gateway and we, when you launch at the wrong time for Lunar Gateway, uh, it takes a lot of effort to get there, a lot of Delta V. So we do make use of the stages Delta V to help us out in that respect. And then once it's done, we move on to the payload, and so there it is. Fairly simple, three AJ-10-190s because I didn't want to be patient. One AJ-10-190 engine would have been just fine, and in this case I'm actually using RCS to do the correction, but yeah, wanted to be quicker about the burns. While it's on its way out to Lunar Gateway, we had to pay attention to Mars Return Vessel. The technically three, but that's actually because it was combined into three parts. So it's actually our first Mars return vessel and uh, that includes Pekka and company and here I am verifying that they will have enough Delta V to capture around Earth when they get back. 
And uh, so they've done their correction and they're on their way. Here is the supply vessel heading out to Lunar Gateway. And there is the current state of our Lunar Gateway here. Looking not really Lunar Gateway-ish, but then again, hopefully they'll add some more modules to it. I don't know what good it is with uh, the baseline version. I had to move off the old container, of course. And that's what we're doing there. And that is the orbited. Lots of fuel on board, though. I sort of wish we had some way to store that. But I don't think there is any room on the station for MMH and Mod 3. So here is the new vessel coming in with Earth in the background. And you can see our long list of things to do. Mostly in this episode, there's a lot of Mars mission management, uh, mid-course maneuvers, as well as arrivals. So here is the docking. There we go. And that's that for now. But that's not a whole lot of time on the life support, about half a year. So we're going to have to pay attention to this again pretty soon. But at least it'll get us through the mid-course adjustments for Mars. Though not all the Mars arrivals, so that's a problem. So we have to resupply before the arrivals at Mars. Anyway, this is a correction with the Attila supply for Mars. This is an Attila thruster from KSP Interstellar. Uh, just making it easier for us to get the supplies out to Mars. Otherwise, we'd just have to do more launches. We could still get them there. It just means more launches, right? Uh, so, yeah. That has its encounter with Mars. And so I add the alarm. Next up is an even more ludicrous engine. This is the, the magneto-inertial fusion engine, I think it is. I just liked it because of the exhaust effect being so ridiculous. These little little pink puffs that come out the end of it. It does have obscene efficiency, but in this case it's delivering fuels, so I just wanted to expedite that as much as possible. Here we have copper spikes in the Mars Mellow and doing a correction there. So uh, copper spikes is on his way. And, of course, making sure that a capture is possible. Unfortunately, it's not in the right phase with the other missions, so it's going to be a little bit inconvenient. But ultimately, we're going to bring everything together around Phobos, so it'll be all right. Uh, in the midst of all this, we do have to pay attention to Dialog Root and Mr. Doobie on their way to Saturn. Otherwise, their water recycling does not work out very well. And then I continue with all of the corrections. This is that nuclear tug that we had launched earlier. And then having done all those mid-course corrections, actually all the supplies have been spent. Well, enough of the supplies have been spent that we already have to launch something else to Lunar Gateway. So we really need to remove some Kerbals from Lunar Gateway, basically. This time I decided to send two of the HTV pressurized containers worth of food, water, and oxygen instead of just one. That will make things a little bit easier. And... I also decided to try out the candle engine from KSB Interstellar. I was in a very KSB Interstellar mood, I suppose. And uh, these are RTGs with the propellant being passed through them. So they don't have a whole lot of thrust. They're obscenely expensive, uh, but they have somewhat better ISP than regular chemical engines, still not as good as nuclear thermal propulsion. However, uh, they are smaller. So they're lighter than a full nuclear thermal propulsion system. So it depends on what you want out of it. I decided that this would be an interesting thing. I think they're like four kilonewtons each. So you can see the thrust weight ratio there. I'm putting nine, which would be very, very expensive when you think about nine RTGs. But I wanted to check there. I had emptied the supplies because I wanted to check that we could reuse the, the pod because Again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not playing career mode, but just role-playing the fact that the candle engines would be really expensive. I decided that we would want to reuse this supply craft, and I wanted to make sure it had enough propellant to get back into low Earth orbit so that it could be topped up with more supplies and fuel. Uh, the actual fuel in there, I think, is the hydrazine. I'm not entirely sure why hydrazine... I mean, it's hydrazine is a light molecule, so I guess... It's easy to shoot out and easier to contain than the hydrogen. 
So I guess it's a good compromise option. We are launching it on Energia with an upper stage, right? So four booster Vulcan, if you will. Well, Soviet Vulcan. Four booster Soviet Vulcan with an upper stage. There we go. And off go the fairings. I use Energia slash Vulcan so much that I've decided that maybe I should make a overgrown Soyuz with RD-170s just to mix things up. But off goes the core, and now we are on the upper stage, which has plenty of Delta V to do the job. So, yeah, we could have sent more supplies even. But again, I have the upper stage tag along with us so that it can do some of the corrections necessary to rendezvous. And we've already, we're sort of encountering Lunar Gateway askew, basically at a perpendicular, we're gonna do a really sharp right turn. At the, was it a right turn or a left turn? Something like that. Uh, as it turns out, we're out of electric charge, but I'm able to use RCS and basically Smart ASS is letting me cheat here. I, I mean, I thought we had enough solar panelry and that I was pointing the right way, but somehow it didn't quite work out. These wraparound solar panels sometimes, depending on how they're configured, uh, don't catch the sunlight quite right. So you have to be careful. And I was not careful, but I was able to save the situation because mainly of MechJeb. And so there are the little uh, RTG engines, if you will, the candle engines doing their work. And we move in for docking. Again, Lunar Gateway is really high above the moon. It's got a low periapsis, but really high apoapsis. So we get these views that I don't know if they make it look like we're around the moon or not. Uh, we're sure high above it. Anyway, it is docked and we have our supplies for now. The supply thing is still red because of Fobium Portal. Uh, we really need to get the supplies there soon. And those are among the things that are arriving at Mars, including this Attila supply vehicle. This one is the one that we really want to get over to Phobos as quickly as possible. And so we have our Retroburn figured out. Unfortunately, I wasn't paying attention to the periapsis. You can see in the bottom left, I don't have the stock information for apoapsis and periapsis up. Otherwise, I would have noticed that uh, our burn, which had to start really, really early because the Attila thruster is not that powerful, is taking too long and brought our periapsis down into the atmosphere and that meant that this explodes. Now at this point the video freezes and uh, the game apparently crashes but it might have been me doing Alt F4, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure, it probably... Normally I would ask chat first whether it's okay to do Alt F4 and it seemed rather fast so I'm not sure. But if I ever do Alt F4 or if I think there's a possibility that I might have done it I'll tell you. But I don't remember if that one was me doing that or whether the game just crashed, which does happen during the stream. So anyway, we got another chance at it. It seems awful convenient, if, uh, an awful convenient crash if it was one. So that's why I'm thinking it was an Alt F4 situation. And that does not happen very often, I will tell you when it happens. But this was absolutely necessary. We needed the supplies there and that was just my negligence. Maybe I was being distracted by chat. I'll blame chat for that. Anyway, that one was saved uh, by those hijinks and we also have uh, this supply vessel with just uh, food and oxygen because we actually have surplus water at Phobian Portal. So this can, could also potentially get there but only with the help of a tug. Uh, we had to dump the water in order to allow for it to have enough Delta V to capture around Mars and it needs to have some help getting over to Phobos. So that's not an immediate option, this Attila Thruster one is. And here we're making a correction so that we can rendezvous with Phobian Portal a little bit easier. And then after that we of course do the capture burn, which doesn't take a whole lot. And of course after that we approach the station, which currently doesn't have too many people, but eventually we'll have many more as we bring all the missions together here. That happens relatively soon after this. So Phobian Portal is going to become a whole lot bigger. So with this vessel coming into dock, I'm going to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.